my name is Verdad Kayeri. Hi, my name is Sheila Shuai. And I'm Sherry Power. And we will be uh, discussing BIM 2.0, which is a cloud-based BIM collaboration executed as a platform, as a service. Within the Oxford Walton framework, we believe that from this particular platform as a service, that the customer segments are the contractor, consultant, owner, and suppliers and vendors. The main channel that customer can uh, have an access to value proposed by CSGO is their website, www.csgo.com. Uh, also, they can use uh, their partner on the website to access the links uh, of this company. And uh, joint venture with company which are well known and uh, exposed to the local uh, region and countries. For uh, customer relations, we believe that personal service will be uh, used uh, predominantly in the early stages when the platform is customized and set up for this uh, specific project. And um, uh, likely afterwards, once this is established, that automated services uh, uh, by within the applications would uh, serve as the main uh, method of servicing the client. Okay, moving to the value proposition, we have uh, the advantage of being the market leader in BIM 2.0. We also provide 24/7 access to the most up-to-date model from any part of the world. We uh, provide a connection with uh, social networks where we can, that can be used for collecting feedback on our website and at the same time for advertising. We also provide customized applications that can be done by either by our team upon the client's request addressing a specific need or by uh, the users themselves. So moving on, we have also the shared library. Uh, this is a huge library that can be accessed from any part of the world and uh, where all the suppliers, vendors, contractors can upload their data on it. We also provide secure data storage that's for uh, uh, any information specifications, anything related to our products and uh, to our model elements itself. Uh, this also uh, can be for secure uh, information like cost uh, for proprietary information. And uh, we also provide advertisement for new softwares and new products as well by vendors that can be also done through our website. And <coughs> we use the our we can use any BIM software through our website without the need to download it or uh, install it on our program or anything. You can just log in to any website, any computer and access directly any BIM software you need. Uh, this also uh, helps us with the less setup cost for, for new companies that are willing to move uh, and start initiating BIM uh, in the crop. We also have online tutorials, we provide online tutorials for using the website and we provide uh, the technical support by CH2M team uh, which is professional in the use of uh, BIM. Uh, we provide better interoperability between different platforms, between different BIM platforms, and uh, also a safer environment for those uh, software providers uh, for their uh, programs not to be pirated. And, you know. We believe that the key activities for this uh, platform as a service would be one, uh, problem solving, which would be resolving any particular issues specific to uh, projects. And secondly, it would be uh, the platform and network, uh, which is maintaining and uh, the, uh, the platform uh, that's run on the cloud. Uh, the first key resources is the financial ones. CH2 needs a very strong financial resources in order to cover the possible losses during some stage of any project. And uh, since they want to have some new experience, they need the financial resources. Uh, the second one is intellectual uh, resources. We divide these parts up to you know, two categories. The first one is pre-qualification, and the second one is the knowledge. And the last one is the human resources. Uh, the CHO Hill has needs uh, the very exper uh, experienced uh, staff, 
and the expertise in order to deliver the key proposition to their, its clients and the customers. We anticipate for key partners to be government entities, and particularly um, uh, the public sector consultants may uh, require training in this capacity, and finally any joint industry efforts that may develop as a result of this. Moving on to the cost structure of our business model, uh, we've uh, separated them into two categories, project-wise, which is uh, if, we go, if the CF journal is going to undertake uh, running the website for a certain project, or uh, the generic costs for the whole platform setting up the website itself. So now, uh, for the generic costs, we have the professional IT, the legal fees, the R&D, the software, the, the server and the data storage acquisition. We have also the advertisement costs that we need to initiate for the, for the website itself to start running. Project-wise costs are divided into three categories. Mobilization 25%, implementation 50%, and support is 25%. Mobilization is basically understanding the client's needs for the project, and implementation is customizing uh, the platform for those needs, and the support is basically keeping it going on to the end of the project. For the project costs, as we covered it in the cost uh, structure, here uh, we have three categories uh, which are multiplied by uh, profits uh, factors. Well, I hope you enjoyed our Austin Walker framework. Now, before we conclude our presentation, I wanted to take a moment and speak upon the platform as a service, uh, BIM collaboration, and the cloud. Now, in regards to uh, infrastructure as a service and software as a service, infrastructure, technical, uh, providing the technical capacity of software as a service or platform as a service, um, there are existing companies such as IBM, SAP, and Amazon that provide this in a very cost-effective uh, way. And uh, at this point, we do not uh, deem it uh, uh, reasonable for uh, CH2ML to uh, lay out the significant uh, capital cost uh, requ uh, required to deploy an infrastructure as a service environment. Now, in regards to software as a service, there are current companies such as uh, the leading UK firm ASI.com that provides a BIM collaboration in a cloud environment, uh, as well as uh, Autodesk and Bentley, the uh, software providers. Now, our proposition is for CH2M Hill to uh, call this environment by leapfrogging the current uh, competition and market and going directly to platforms. This particular uh, environment uh, allows it to the uh, clients and even down the road, it's a standalone uh, software to existing markets that do not yet uh, capitalize on a cloud based in collaboration. It's an interview with none other than uh, the VP of CH2M Health, uh, BIM, Mr. Brent Mowdy. Thank you. Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, this morning I'm being joined by none other than Mr. Brent Mowdy of CH2M Health, uh, distinguished executive, who uh, has graciously agreed to be part of this interview, and not long ago was so kind as to uh, present to the 2012 fall class of uh, business of civil engineering knowledge uh, the uh, implementation and services uh, that CH2M Health provides in regards to BIM. Uh, good morning, Mr. Maudi, and thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I understand that uh, uh, within uh, the construction sector that there have been um, um, not as many gains that other sectors have enjoyed in the past several decades, specifically manufacturing and healthcare. Do you believe that uh, the uh, BIM process will allow this particular sector to uh, catch up? Yeah, I, I strongly believe that and I advocate that in all of the uh, teachings and writings that I do. 
Um, I would say in the last 50 to 60 years, the construction segment has not moved. So if you look at our efficiency with respect to the product that we deliver, it has just been stagnant. Whereas you see design automation tools, manufacturing tools, um, prefab, the abilities to actually create products outside of the construction industry has greatly increased what they can deliver within their time frames. For us, BIM brings an ability to really just um, close down that technological void that's existed within the construction industry and bring a seamless um, connection from design straight through to operations of the building. Excellent. Now, uh, knowing that BIM collaboration is the uh, new hot topic within this, uh, within this area and that there are existing sites, um, companies, uh, specifically uh, to my recollection, asite.com based out of the UK provides this uh, BIM collaboration service as uh, executed within the software as a service framework. And uh, per our uh, previous discussion that our business model proposition is to execute this more in a platform as a service uh, level, with the distinction being that uh, at the platform level, you would be able to develop and execute specific applications for that particular um, service, in this case being BIM. Right. Do you believe that there exists currently or may in the future uh, the need for new, more advanced applications? I think if, um, if BIM really takes a stronghold within the entire construction industry, then I would say definitely. Right now, today, we've got various software vendors that will provide a collaborative cloud-based environment that will facilitate BIM collaboration strongly through the design process, but as you move throughout the life cycle of a project, that ability, of, it doesn't weaken, but it somewhat diminishes with respect to familiarity and ease of implementation when you get through to construction and into the stakeholder realm beyond the project. If there was that ability to strongly connect and then utilize a medium to develop specific applications to meet needs of projects and stakeholders, then that would intensify the need for such a service. So I, I would say through time, more awareness and use of BIM will drive a higher need to develop such a service and utilize that. Okay. Now, in regards to uh, the platform level, um, execution of this, um, what do you believe would be the uh, customer segments? I, I believe it would be the non-modeling um, users, if that makes sense. So I myself, I utilize BIM authoring tools to create models and share them as much as I can through the life cycle. For me, I have various software vendors that facilitate that for me. But when you think of the stakeholders, when you think of management, um, client and their um, operations team, for example, they're not they're not BIM users. They're the ones who would be able to say, "Well, connect me, let me see what you can do, and let me leverage this platform service to build tools or widgets or whatever the case, so I can comment on a model, so I can visualize certain pieces, so I can maybe extract just what I need if I'm, for example, operating a treatment plant." or uh, yeah, an industrial warehouse, and I want to isolate certain portions of the BIM and the information for me to leverage, how would I do that not being a BIM user? It's those of applications where the platform as a service can extend itself and make itself um, able to service those types of individuals. Excellent. And uh, we were just speaking about the uh, customer segments. Now, I wanted to... Uh, get your input in regards to the value proposition of this uh, BIM collaboration executed at the platform level? Um, there, there's a couple asp ways to look at that, and one being, you know, when you think about profit, it, it would have to depend on the efficiency and capabilities housed within the organization providing the service. That would be the first thing. So like with anything BIM, you know, there, there's a cost to set it up, a cost to bring your people up to speed. But once you've established that, you know, you can look at um, various ways to provide a multiplier, looking at potentially a 50% efficiency factor. So from a pure profitability standpoint, you know, you'd be selling a service of expertise in the same manner as sell his service as an expertise. Then from a value standpoint, now you're opening the door for 
better connectivity within the industry of your stakeholders in order to leverage BIM data through lifecycle and to have that capability become more common. Thus, when it's potentially in proposals, when it's potentially in joint ventures, you're not starting over. You're able to reconnect with the entire team because it's become more common because there's services to provide it. Does that make okay. sense? No, it does. Absolutely. And thank you. And now, in regards to the possible revenue sources or revenue generation, what is, in your uh, opinion, uh, sources of that? See, that, that's, that's a little more intriguing because oftentimes we're leveraging software as provided by vendors, so there's technically no revenue available in that. The revenue that I see is through intellectual, intellectual property development of the applications themselves. So, for an example, we, we leverage a certain software vendor internal to CH2M Hill to provide our cloud-based BIM collaboration. We've then gone ahead and built widgets, if you want to call them, that leverage the API of the software, yet are built for our services. And when we do that, we've all of a sudden now created um, an applicant as new stream uh, configuration expertise of template generation. So you take whatever framework is there and part of an application you develop in the platform would be how do you get something started up and running and rolled out and what type of um, infrastructure do you build as a template in order to facilitate and steward deployment. Okay, now I understand that uh, CH2M Hill uh, not too long ago acquired uh, Vico software. And uh, no, we acquired Vico Engineering. Vico Engineering. Yeah, not the software associate. Not because that those are two separate things. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was uh, confused. I thought it was the BIM side of the company. No, 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 no. So currently, does CH2M Hill have a capacity to develop? Uh, I guess you've already developed the widgets. Now, do you do that internally, or is that uh, outsourced? We have a um, develop a re an R and D department really, so they focus on automate automation tools and what we can do with them to help better and make ourselves more efficient. So it's a, it's a service that we've built internally that we can leverage across our enterprise. But if somebody's looking to start something up, they probably won't have that service built in. So that's where you know there's that opportunity to leverage. Um, programmers or others in the industry giving certain pieces of what you're looking for and to, to, and you know, just orchestrate the development into um, into the final product. Okay, excellent. And uh, that will conclude our interview. And thank you again for uh, making your making time in your busy schedule to be part of part of this. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye bye.